This video introduces supplied air respirators and presents an affordable option for using this type of system with 3D printing. If you enjoy disaster movies like Outbreak, then you have seen a supplied air respirator in action. This type of respirator provides a high level of protection against particulates, chemical fumes, smoke, and the occasional world-ending virus. The American agency OSHA the Occupational Safety and Health Administration uses an index called Assigned Protection Factors, or APFs, to help employers select an appropriate respirator type for a given environment. The APF index provides a comparison between respirator types, with higher APFs lowering worker exposure. The half-mask respirators from the 3M have an average APF of 10, which means that by design, one-tenth or 10% of a contaminant's concentration will penetrate. The exact percentage is of course dependent on a wide variety of factors, including the target chemical. A full mask respirator has an APF of 50, so only 2% contaminants penetrate. These use the same cartridges and can provide splash protection, but they are slightly more expensive and limit vision. A loose-fitting head cover or hood in a powered air purifying respirator or a supplied air respirator is assigned a default APF of 25 by OSHA since these are not tight-fitting, but in practice this rating can be upwards of 1000. A powered air purifying respirator uses a larger $150 cartridge and a small blower fan, while the supplied air respirator uses an airline. Both have a continuous flow of clean air which allows for the level of protection that is up to 100 times more than a typical cartridge respirator. I will go over a few pros and cons between the different headpieces in a minute. The best protection is provided by a self-contained breathing apparatus that is used in environments immediately dangerous to life, such as in firefighting, but this would be overkill for a hobby. This system uses compressed breathable air and has an APF of 10,000. Now an official 3M supplied air respirator setup can be quite expensive for use in a casual hobby. The most expensive component will be the air compressor required to supply up to 15 CFM at 90 PSI or 420 liters per minute at 620 kilopascals. This airflow rate is much higher than a pancake compressor can provide and it is required for safe operation. The cheapest electric air compressors that can safely do this are above $2,000. You need to meet the airflow requirement while also avoiding gas and oil lubricated compressors. Gas compressors produce carbon monoxide and oil lubricated compressors vaporize oil, both of which enter the air supply. Non-oil lubricated compressors use Teflon components, so small particulates of PTFE will be generated. This and moisture collected in the system are two reasons why the compressed air must pass through a series of filters to produce clean breathing air often specified as grade D air. Beyond the compressor and filters needed, the official 3M air hose is $500 for only 50 feet. The regulating valve is $260, and the breathing tube is yet another $100. Thus, the total can quickly approach $4,000, which is a lot for a hobby, but acceptable for businesses. The bonuses of this system are reliability, certifiability, use with multiple people, delivering chilly air to the user through adiabatic cooling, and the use of compressed air for any number of other applications. However, there is a cheaper alternative to this that I have been testing and using successfully for dozens of hours of post-processing resin prints. A low-pressure supplied air respirator system retails for $1,000 to $3,000, but we can build one ourselves and we'll start by picking a headpiece. The three main options to choose from are an economical polypropylene head cover, a robust plastic head cover, or a polypropylene hood. I recommend starting off with the polypropylene head cover as it will be appropriate for most people and is affordable. The hard plastic head cover will offer physical protection and looks awesome, but it is also quite expensive. A hood is ideal if you have a beard or want additional splash protection around your neck and chest. When determining to go with a small or large size, you will need to measure your head circumference. The average female is 55 centimeters, and the average male is 57 centimeters. So most people will use a small size, but do check yourself. 
We will be supplying air to the headpiece using thin plastic duct and a 4 inch inline blower fan that is 60 watts. If you must source a different model of fan, make sure it has at least 200 CFM at 50 watts. The fan manufacturers do not always list the static pressure, and we need the pressure to force the air into the headpiece. A 200 CFM fan at say 20 watts would have significantly less pressure given fan affinity laws. The duct I am using is a 4 inch diameter 4 mil thick polyethylene tubing. The smallest rolls of this tubing on Amazon are typically 500 feet for about $50, but you can buy a smaller quantity on McMaster if you don't want that much. I will link both in the description. It is possible to use vinyl duct for this, but the extra weight drags backwards on your head. The duct connects to the headpiece with a reducing adapter. The two halves of the adapter can be FDM printed and held together with a hose clamp over it and the tubing. I have also designed a spacer for mounting the duct onto the fan to help prevent tearing. Both STLs are linked below. The hose clamps can be any 4 inch variant, but I recommend ones with thumb screws for ease of use. The air compressor or fan that you use in this setup needs to be away from the contaminated environment to deliver clean air. The easiest way to do this is to set the fan outside. If this is not possible, then you can install additional duct to retrieve outdoor air. If you are inside a house and using a window to vent contaminants outside, then you need to use a different window for your intake, preferably one on a different side of the house. It is also a best practice to use a MERV-13 or HEPA filter on your air intake to purify the air you are delivering to your face. I'm currently using a 6x6x1 six six inch HEPA filter, which is affordable but has a lower surface area than alternatives. The filter sits in a reducing adapter right onto the fan. You could also 3D print a filter housing like this to connect your duct to. This system by 4D filtration is free to print yourself, or you can buy components from them. Regardless of how you decide to structure your supplied air respirator setup, the one thing you must buy is a pulse oximeter. You need this to check your blood oxygen level during use. My level typically sits at 95 to 97 percent. When wearing the hood without any airflow, my testing put me at 93 percent and with airflow active, my blood oxygen level generally increased and stayed near 99 percent. To summarize everything we covered, a supplied air respirator can improve your safety when working in a hazardous environment. While using compressed air and official equipment will be more reliable, it is possible to achieve reasonable results at a fraction of the price. The proposed system is not a replacement for any certified supplied air respirator. With any path you take, please stay safe when using a respirator like this. If your blood oxygen level drops, airflow stops, or you notice any physical body change during use, please stop using any system immediately. Hopefully now that you've learned more about respirator types, you can choose what level of protection you are comfortable with. If you have any questions, hit me with them in the comments. Thanks for watching guys and gals. Aerosolder, out.